In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. It is Friday, the third of November, twenty twenty three. 30th week in ordinary time, and today we remember Saint Martin de Porres, religious. Martin was born in Lima, Peru, in 1579, the son of a white Spanish father and a black mother freed from slavery. He learned medicine as a boy, and when he entered the Dominican order, he served as infirmarian. Martin tended the many poor who were ill as well as those who were coming to the monastery for help. He was known as Martin the Charitable because of his kindness and generosity towards all. Blessed with extraordinary spiritual gifts, he led a life of profound prayer, humility, and penance. He died in 1639 at the age of 60. He is the patron saint of African Americans. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Edward Jada from Christiansen, Norway, celebrating his birthday today, takes for us the first reading. Jen Kamau and Mark Ocheng celebrating their fifth anniversary of marriage today from Nairobi, Kenya. Take for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Walter Chenika who celebrated his birthday yesterday from East Anglia, England, United Kingdom. Let us pray. O oh God, who led St. Martin de Porres by the path of humility to heavenly glory, grant that we may so follow his radiant example in this life as to merit to be exalted with him in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. I could wish that I myself were accursed for the sake of my brethren. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Romans chapter 9 verses 1 to 5. Brethren, I'm speaking the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the sonship, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and of their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Psalm 147, 12 to 13, 14 to 15, 19 to 20. Response is taken from Psalm 147, verse 12a. And the response is, O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. O Jerusalem, Glorify the Lord. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. O Zion, praise your God. 
He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. He established peace on your borders. He gives you your fill of finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. He reveals his word to Jacob, to Israel, his decrees and judgments. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his judgments. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. Gospel acclamation comes from John chapter 10, verse 27. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, and I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler who belonged to the Pharisees, they were watching him. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they were silent. Then he took him and healed him, and let him go. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox, that has fallen into a well, will not immediately pull him out on a Sabbath day. And they could not reply to this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever I reach this part of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, I feel that I don't have the passion that Paul himself had. This man was a great preacher. This man understood what he preached about. He was so convinced about the word that he preached that he could even think of losing his own life, that he could even think of being cut from God. Christ because of wanting others to be part of Christ. Gosh, this man was convinced. This man knew what he was preaching. You know where you get so involved in something that you wouldn't want anyone to miss something. This explains something to us. The reason why many of us don't even want to share the word that we receive is because we are not yet convinced of how beneficial this word is. The reason why in our families we cannot sit and tell the children about the faith we have is because we do not have the convictions of Paul. We do not have that depth of faith. We just think it is a somehow thing. We don't see life in it. We don't see our faith as something that benefits us at all. Look at what Paul says. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, my fellow Jews, that they may have what I am having right now, that they may experience the peace I am experiencing right now. Oh gosh, they are Israelites, and to them belong the sonship, the glory, the covenant, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. That is why I would want them to be part of it. I don't know if you have that passion, the passion of wanting your children to experience what we are experiencing, if you are experiencing something at all. I'm experiencing a compassionate and loving God. A God who sees my dropsy. A God who sees my edema. You may not know what dropsy is all about. It is the fluid retention. It is the building up of fluid in the body's tissue. Most commonly, the legs or arms are affected. Symptoms may include skin, which feels tight. The area may feel heavy. 
and joint stiffness. And Jesus was able to see all that. And the major underlining causes of dropsy are congestive heart failure, liver failure, kidney failure, and malnutrition. Jesus was able to see all that. Maybe others were not seeing. He was invited for a meal. Being so compassionate, so caring, he had all that detail and he was able to see that this man had dropsy and that he needed healing right there. And leaving aside the meal, he started healing that man. He healed him. You may be joining the meal of Christ. You may be joining the Eucharist and having the sickness that you may not know about. Understand this. Jesus is seeing all that. You might not have gone to the doctor to find out whether your liver is okay, whether your kidneys are okay, whether your inner organs are okay. But understand this. Jesus is seeing that and he's going to cure you. At that meal of the Eucharist is going to make sure that you are made well. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Friday to you. Thanks be to God. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Spoken to me. And I. This is my day.